Charlie, looks like we're going to have competition. That's a fish hawk up there. I don't know a fish hawk when I see one. Well, Doc, I'd say you didn't know a fish hawk. No self-respecting fish hawk would waste its time in this pond. Yeah, you watch and see. If there's a fish in this lake, you'll see him. Fellow says eyes like a hawk must have been thinking of that boy up there, or his twin brother. You know, hawks can see objects ten times as far away as we can. Yeah? Yeah, they're equipped with regular telescopes. Good at seeing things, eh? None better. Aye, watch him dive. He spotted a fish. He gets down there in a hurry, doesn't he? Better than a hundred miles an hour, and he never takes his eye off the prey. Look, Doc, your mighty fisherman missed him that time. I tell you, there's no more fish left in this lake. Well, I guess old Isaac Walton himself missed one once in a while. <laughs> For that matter, fish have got pretty good eyes themselves to protect them from their enemies. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me a fish has got eyes like a hawk. No, but a fish can see where a hawk can't. Nothing can sneak up on him. You look here. Most fish, like the trout, have lenses in their eyes that are round like a ball. He's got two of these eyes, back to back, in the sides of his head. So, Mr. Trout can see pretty near everything on the left side with his left eye and everything on the right with his right eye. Here in front, he sees with both his eyes. And to cover the rear guard, he sees with both his eyes back to here. How do they expect a man to catch fish with all that lined up against him? Oh, that isn't all. A fish can see above him. That includes things out of the water, like a man on the bank. I give up. From now on, you can settle with me for canned salmon. Wait a minute, boy, wait. There's one spot where a fish can't see a thing. Where's that? Right in front of his snout. It's a small place, but he has to use his nose to smell what goes on there. Well, that's different. That's exactly where I'm going to aim for from now on. Watch me, the champion flycaster. Well, Doc is right. Fish do have remarkable eyes, and many birds, reptiles, and animals have strange and interesting seeing mechanisms, too. Scientists today are not satisfied with just a bird's eye view of the world. They're trying to find out what the world looks like to turtles, monkeys, squirrels, and guinea pigs as well. One of the most interesting sets of eyes they've discovered is that of the tarsier, a goggle-eyed little animal recently brought to the United States from the Philippine Islands. At Yale University School of Medicine, Dr. John F. Fulton and his associates are learning a lot about tarsier the only two in America. And this is the first time they have ever been before the motion picture camera. Tarsier sees a lot of the world through these goggle eyes of his. They cover over half his face, and along with the neck he can swivel in a half circle, they give him a good view all around him. Scientists are studying Tarsier and other animals and birds because they want a better understanding of human eyes and the facts they've learned about human eyesight have been valuable in the designing of many everyday things in the modern world. For example, the typefaces that we read, the conditions under which we work, and our homes where we live and play have improved because of a better understanding of human eyesight. And scientific research goes beyond the laboratory. Certainly our most common form of transportation, the motor car, reflects in its design and engineering the knowledge of the human seeing mechanism that science has accumulated. To give a wide angle of vision for safe driving, a glass has been developed that can be used in large sections without view obstructing supports. Safety plate glass in motor car windows is a sandwich of two pieces of plate glass with a chemical plastic between, laminated by heat and pressure into a clear, strong plate with the toughness to withstand blows. To the safety of strength has been added the safety of unblurred vision. This scene, taken through ordinary safety sheet glass, with all its distortion, contrasts with the same scene shot at the same angle through the window of a 1940 automobile with safety plate glass. There's no distortion here. 
It's as clear as crystal. Unblurred visibility in the modern automobile allows full use of our seeing mechanism. A most important fact about the relation of our eyes to driving is that we have two fields of vision. Binocular, seeing with both eyes, and monocular, seeing with each eye alone. The driver has a fairly broad field of binocular vision straight ahead. Everything within the area marked by the arrows is seen by the driver with both eyes very clearly. And then out of the right eye alone, the driver can see everything in the area at the right marked by the arrows. This is monocular vision, not nearly as sharp as binocular vision. On the left side, the driver has another slice of single eye vision. Without moving her eyes or her head, she can see the car coming up on her left. Even though objects in the monocular field of vision aren't particularly clear, movements seen monocularly out of the corners of her eyes are instantly detected and draw her attention. The engineers have taken advantage of our binocular vision in the scientific design of the car. For example, the corner post is no longer an obstruction. By taking a scene with two cameras, one in the position of each of the driver's eyes, we can see how binocular vision enables the driver to see around a thinner, stronger corner post. Here is the scene taken with the right eye camera. And this scene was taken with the left eye camera. When the left eye and the right eye scenes are combined, the thin, solid line of the corner post has disappeared, and around it the driver sees clearly with both eyes over a wide angle. Everything considered, man has a good mechanism for seeing. He may not have the spherical lens of the trout or the swivel neck of tarsier, but then he doesn't need them. Let's see if tarsier would really have any advantage in the modern automobile. This camera on a swivel will cover the same field of vision that the little goggle-eyed animal would have. Such equipment might be handy in traffic at that. On the left, the field of vision is a complete half circle. And also a half circle on the right. Except for the slope at the back of the top and the door and windshield supports, this closed car allows a complete field of vision. Now let's change the lens in the camera and take a picture of what a fish might see if he could drive an automobile. A fish can see a complete half circle at one time with each eye, without moving its head. This special camera has a spherical lens like that of a fish eye. And this is the field of vision a fish would have through the windshield of an automobile. It's all very complete, but it makes you a little dizzy. And after all, perhaps it's best that we don't have the field of vision of a fish or the field of vision of Tarsier if we had to look like him.